Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we are gonna get right into the Virgo Weekly Love Outlook uh, for September 28th, starting today up till October 4th. All right guys, so <clears throat> let's get right into it. Virgo, the Weekly Outlook, if you're new to my channel, my Weekly Outlook, I take a look into a connection that you have with someone. Uh, this could be a reconciliation, it could be an old lover, a new lover, it could be your current lover. Whatever the case is, <clears throat> there's a connection you have with someone in love, and we're going to take a look at it this week. Um, it's just a weekly snapshot. It doesn't mean anything about the relationship itself long term or anything like that. Just a weekly snapshot. So first, let's take a look at your oracle cards. Where we go? All right, we have Spirit of Masquerade, Spirit of Gold, and Spirit of the Fly. All right, well, right away we're talking about changes, falsehoods, stagnation, and money, right? Spirit of Masquerade and Spirit of Gold. Right away we see we're talking about Masquerade in the sense of... Uh, False identities, hidden agendas, being deceptive. We have the spirit of gold coming in, so there's money involved, a lot of it. And then spirit of the fly, which is all about, you know, something kind of decaying and rotting, and it's time for it maybe to die, <laughs> you know? Stagnation, it's the, de it's the stage before death, before the loss, when things start to break apart and, and sort of decompose, right? So we're talking about that in terms of energy in a relationship. Uh, there's a stagnation there, right? There's a stagnation. Could be. We'll see how this plays into uh, your read. Okay, Virgo, so let's go ahead and pull out your cards for the week. Again, I'm going to be pulling out cards for your person and cards for you. And see where you guys are this week. Show me what's going on for Virgo and their person. Show me. And then I'll get some clarifiers at the end of the reading. I hope you like my Sugar Skull Kitty. Uh, I love it. Just found her the other day and I was like, this is perfect season for her. So I've added her to my collection on my table, my reading table, my good vibe, my collection of good vibes that I get. So here we go. All right, your person is coming into the week with a Six of Pentacles, Virgo. You're coming in with Queen of Cups. They see you as an Eight of Wands, and you see them as an Eight of Swords. Now, there you go, right there. Okay, there's your challenge. Eight of Swords, very, very toxic energy. They desire the lovers, and you desire a hermit. Ooh. What needs to happen for them is the Knight of Swords and for you, Ace of Pentacles. And there's your windfall coming in. At the bottom of the deck, we have Three of Swords. Three of Swords, excuse me. Wow, isn't that funny? Oh, fell, flip, this just came, flipped down over to the world. Three of Swords has been showing up all week uh, for, for the readings this week, right? This is the third out of, uh, I want to say, five readings I've done where the Three of Swords has shown up at the bottom of the deck. So this is going to be a difficult week for everyone, I want to say, f you know, because if three out of the five signs I've read for so far, you know what I'm saying, wherever that Three of Swords lands, whether it's you or the opposite person, it's a difficult week for a lot of us, right? Three of Swords is a week of betrayal. It's a feeling of betrayal, certainly. And I'm going to say that, uh, oh, gosh, you know, let's get right into it, okay? Let's get right into it. There's some definitely some boundaries here that need to be put in place. Straight out the gate, <clears throat> Virgo, your person is coming in as a six of pentacles, and you are coming in as a queen of cups. Six of Pentacles is someone who's feeling very gracious, right? Uh, so your person is coming in this week. They're feeling very gracious, very magnanimous. Uh, they, they want to give. Six of Pentacles is all about charity and the desire to give of yourself, to give charity, to give to others, to help others out. It's about the juxtaposition between giving and taking and the balance. And how sometimes it's not always about taking, but it's also about giving. Having that natural equilibrium, <clears throat> that's what the scales are there for. 
I've seen people misinterpret that as measuring who to give uh, money to, which is really a twisted kind of way of seeing this card. Uh, the scales represent uh, the figure's constant weighing out of his self, of himself, uh, his own uh, abundance, how much he needs to have and how much he desires to give to the world and keeping a good balance of that, not giving too much and not hoarding also and keeping too much to himself. This is this is the card of harmony, number of harmony, six. And so your person is coming into the week with that. You are coming in with Queen of Cups, so you're feeling extremely sensitive this week, Virgo. You're wanting to express yourself. <clears throat> Certainly, Queen of Cups energy is a desire to give that special cup of love that only the Queen has. Only the Queen has that cup, right? And all of the tarot cards in the deck. Only she has that particularly ornamented cup like that. And it just speaks to how special her love is that she gives. She has something very unique to give. Queens are always water, water of water. Queen of Cups is water of water. So we're talking about the most emotional of all the court cards, the most sensitive, but she is emotionally healthy. She simply wants a connection with someone <clears throat> where she can not only express herself on a deep level, but connect. She wants connection on a deep level. She doesn't want to be the only one expressing herself. She wants to be able to also exchange with you. This is why she is handing that cup over. So you're feeling this deep, deep sense of, I want to say emotionality this week, sensitivity. Now, here's where it gets interesting. How do you guys see each other? Well, <clears throat> they're seeing you as an eight of wands and you're seeing them as an eight of swords. Well, eight of wands, first of all, they see you as someone who's really giving up some mixed messages. They see mixed messages coming in from you. They see mixed emotions, mixed uh, motives, ulterior motives maybe even. Uh, when we start to talk about the spirit of masquerade, it can feel like that with the Eight of Wands simply because uh, the emotions that are coming in are all sort of uneven, they're disjointed, they're not connected. Eight is also the number for strength and for boundaries. With Eight of Wands, we have so much coming in that we have to put boundaries in place. So Eight of Wands can sometimes be that viral card, too, when it's just too much, when somebody's just coming in too much to you or giving you too much information. And it becomes quite chaotic. You can't really understand it. So this is how your person sees you this week. They're seeing you as being very, very sort of, I want to say, energetically chaotic. <clears throat> your energy is all over the place, and they're not really sure where you're coming from, and it may be that they begin to put some boundaries in place or they begin to sort of put a hand up and say, look, there's only so much, right? Interestingly enough, you're seeing them as an Eight of Swords. Now, Eight of Swords is my gaslighter. Eight of Swords, look at that individual there on that card. This person is self-bound. They've bound themselves up or they are bound up as a result of their own behavior, their own very restricted behavior. Those swords are, are uh, representative or symbolic of the type of mentality this person has. This is a very closed-minded person, very difficult person to speak to, and the type of person that, by virtue of their own behavior, they end up um, alienating themselves from people around them, hence this sort of wall of swords. They also end up feeling like nothing is their fault or they are out of control, hence the figure is bound. This feeling of, like... Um, I'm not doing this. You're making me do this. I don't know what decision. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lack of taking responsibility. Eight of Swords can, in, in its light form, it doesn't have to be this toxic, but it can get very, very toxic. Eight of Swords can get extremely toxic uh, depending on who you're dealing with. This is the person who's the victimizer. They always play the victim. They always uh, want to gaslight you into making you believe you're responsible. They never want to take responsibility for their own decisions. They often find themselves alienated from others around them because of their behavior, and then they blame everyone else around them. So it's interesting that <clears throat> you're seeing them as being quite toxic this week. They're unavailable. They're unapproachable. You're unable to speak with them. Um, there's a real kind of... Uh, I want to say there's a real gaslighty feel here to this where, um, <clears throat> you know, they're seeing you as somebody who's coming in with a lot of mixed emotions, and they're probably projecting that out to you. You're seeing them as being quite flaky this week. You're kind of like, well, look, you know, why are you, bl you know, you're blaming me for all of this, but a lot of this is your own actions as well, right? Take, you know, you're seeing them as being very, very sort of like, uh, I want to say that you see them as really projecting a lot of toxic behavior on you. 
And naturally, I feel like this eight of wands, then this feeling, they may be saying things to you this week, like, well, I don't know where you're coming from. Well, I don't understand you. Even though you probably feel as though, Virgo, you've probably uh, would take the stance that you've made yourself very clear, right? Uh, and yet they may be saying that to you. And, and so in turn, you are seeing them as being kind of a gaslighter this week and kind of blaming things on you that really aren't your fault. Now, what do you, what do you both desire? Here it gets even more interesting. They desire lover's connection, whereas you desire hermit energy, which is your card. Hermit is the card for Virgo. By the way, lover's is the card for Gemini and, and tarot. And that doesn't mean anything, folks. Um... It's just that we have a, a, you know, there's a juxtaposition between all of the different disciplines uh, when we talk about uh, mystic mysticism and the disciplines of esoterica. And of course, there's going to be a card for each of the zodiac signs. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're dealing with that sign, okay? <clears throat> but it is significant to note, Virgo, when you show up in your own reading, and here you are, uh, the hermit, your cards, showing up in your reading. And that's the most significant thing when you see these cards because it's like you're really in your element, Virgo. You're very, very much feeling like you want to be on your own. You're wanting to pull back. Um, <clears throat> they want lovers. You want hermit. There's a complete difference in energies here. Something I think is de decaying, stagnating for you. And uh, for them, although, there is a, I want to say there may even be a false motive there. Again, we have money coming in, right? So it's interesting that they're the ones who come in this week with this really kind of charitable sort of attitude. You want love, and yet there's this break. In the end, you're seeking more of a spiritual sort of connection, I want to say. And yes, they're seeking a lover's connection, but there's something amiss here. There's something involved. Now, Three of Swords is showing up as a betrayal, Virgo, at the bottom of the deck. It could be that somewhere there's a hidden aspect here and that could be the spirit of masquerade coming in. There is some component to this relationship or connection, Virgo, that may be hidden that could explain why you guys are at such odds. You come into the week with very compatible energy. Six is the number for harmony. Queen of Cups is all about sensitivity and exchanging emotions. These are positive, I would say, positively orientated uh, energies, and yet... Boom, we come into this eight, testing, strength, uh, boundaries need to be put in place, right? Gaslighting energy here, a little toxicity here, and an inability to understand what you're saying. And then a complete desire to be at two different ends of the spectrum. Nine is the individual wanting to be further away, wanting to be much more on your own. And then the lover's card showing up again, another six for your person showing up that they want to really... Uh, combine with you in, in this way. Now, what needs to happen? Knight of Swords and Ace of Pentacles. So it could be that you guys are going through something financially that's standing in the way. It could be that there is indeed another relationship that is somehow wound up financially here. There's something going on here that's standing in the way, and I'm not necessarily sure that these difference in energies are just down to you guys. It could be outside energies. Because what needs to happen for your person, Virgo, is they need Knight of Swords. They need to cut the ties be from... Your person still has ties to things that are holding them back. Could be another relationship. Could be another responsibility. It could be something. And they need to take that responsibility. You're seeing them as eight of swords down here. So not really as someone who does normally take responsibility necessarily, or certainly not this week. Again, this is a weekly snapshot. But what needs to happen, um, Virgo, is your person needs to actively take responsibility for the ties and the connections in his or her life that are holding that person back from a better relationship. If what they desire is lovers. For you, you have Ace of Pentacles. Your desire is hermit energy. And although um, it, it seems to me at the moment, yes, you may be desiring to be much more away and independent from this person... You're still wanting to exchange your cup of love. I feel like you're just on, you're just feeling off about them right now and you're retreating into your hermit energy. And it can be, again, what needs to happen for you is Ace of Pentacles. There's a monetary issue here that is affecting you also. So for you, Virgo, it could be your work situation or something like that that is really calling on your energy that you really, really need to deal with so that you can much better. Uh, either be in your hermit or decide what you want to do with this relationship because you're coming into the week wanting to have this connection, Queen of Cups, but then you pull away.
And again, it feels to me intuitively on this read that the reason why you're pulling away is not necessarily lack of love or feeling or desire, but there is an outside influence. And for you, that outside influence has something to do with financial stability, work, etc. Let's get some clarifiers, and I'm going to call this a reading, Virgo. And we'll get, after this, I'm going to go right into Capricorn and finish off the Earth, Earth, uh, Earth Signs, Earth Sign Weekly Love. And then I'm going to jump right into, I think I'm going to do Water Signs next. All right, show me some clarity for my lovely Virgos for this week. We're, again, September 28th today to October 4th. On this reading, <clears throat> something going on here. Yes, decay is happening. Spirit of the fly, there is stagnation. Spirit of masquerade just, I think, speaks to the hidden component here that is somehow affecting this relationship, which is, I want to say something. There is a third component in as much as we still have three of swords here. It doesn't have to be a person necessarily, but there is a third component here that has to be addressed and looked at. Show me what's going on for this connection. Show me for Virgo. Four of Pentacles, right. So there's a money problem. Worried about money, Seven of Swords, okay. And a Six of Cups. So love is there, you're friends with this individual. Some of you are gonna be friends with this person. You've had a long-term friendship with them and up until now, everything has probably been very pleasurable. Um, but there is a feeling with money. You have Four of Pentacles, so there's a desire, there's a, not a desire, a tendency toward greed holding back miserliness. There's a threat to financial stability, I think, that is uh, ultimately somehow making you retreat into your shell this week. Four of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, what needs to come in in the Hermit. So that Four of Pentacles, it's like you're not ready to share, okay? You're not ready to share, Virgo, and it's very important that you get this sort of material aspect of your life under control so that you can then move forward indeed. We do have Seven of Swords here also. <clears throat> So Seven of Swords, again, you know, it's quite interesting because um, he's the thief in the night, right? Uh, he's oftentimes, Seven of Swords is that energy of like, like, um, look, you know, uh, I'm not going to necessarily work for it. I'm going to take what I can take. Uh, there is someone there, I want to say, who's kind of treacherous, could be somebody close to you, right? Could be someone close to you who's just not willing to work for it. You know, Seven of Swords is the person, you see him walking away, smiling, like, ah, ha, ha, I'm the cat that got the cream. This is someone who's not willing to work. They're, they're covetous. They want to take what you have. So there's also, a, there is an aspect of treachery here. There's an aspect of treachery or, or someone backstabbing you or someone working behind the scenes. Usually, again, this is going to be someone very close. There's a monetary aspect here that is affecting this relationship very, very strongly and needs to be discussed this week. And, of course, Six of Cups is what I talked about a minute ago, that this may be a friend or there is a long-term friendship here that's also involved with this. Very messy very financially driven, something does need to change. And there's definitely something that is hidden here, but it's all coming out this week. All right, Virgo, I'm going to leave it at that. This is your reading for September 28th to October 4th. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, and share. I did recently get braces on my teeth, so you have to excuse me if I sound a little funny or the... You know, my pronunciation is a little bit off. I'm, just, I'm still getting used to it a little bit. But for now, guys, thank you so much for checking me out. If you're new to my channel, if you're a regular, you know how much I love you and appreciate your continued support. And I will see you guys at your next Virgo reading. Bye-bye now.